Okay guys, I've had a few queries about Check.io, so I thought I'd do this quick video. Um, this is the Check.io site, Check.io.org. Uh, feel free to explore it around, but ultimately you're going to end up where this start game link takes you. Um, don't go off looking elsewhere, you'll get frightened to death by the level of code that's in there. So have a look around, you know, if you go through all the various things. Um, or just click up here to start with, which is what I should have done really. Uh, you'll end up with this thing where it's uh, let's start. So let's click on that. Um, what we're going to do is um, create a new account on here. So I'm going to log in uh, with Facebook to start with. Let's pull in my name, um, my email. Uh, I've actually used my work one because obviously I've been playing with this before. So I'm just going to use my Gmail one. sign up okay so we're, we're kind of in you can see it's some kind of world uh, we're on some home lump of rock at the moment there's various other things and lots of things are locked so we're not going to get there until we've made some progress we could go to elementary uh, I don't know I don't think we can go to elementary actually now I think we've got to start at home basically we've got to complete a task um, on this very first island to even get going uh, and the first task is Fizz Buzz. Uh, it's an elementary task. So we click on Fizz Buzz. Uh, and here's basically what we've got to do. <coughs> so after reading the task description, you can head over to the code editor to solve it. So we've got to understand, first of all, the game Fizz Buzz, which is used to teach robots. Um, and we need to write a function that will receive a positive integer and return. Uh, a string fizz buzz if it's divisible by three and five a string fizz if it's just divisible by three or buzz if it's just divisible by five yeah it's actually a game this if you've not come across it before um, the number um, is a string so um, it's going to return it as a string um, we're going to put it in as an integer but we're going to return it as a string so if we call our function and we pass 15 in because that's divisible by three and five our function should return fizz buzz if we pass in 6 and fizz because it's divisible by 3 uh, check our 5 for buzz check our 7 it just returns the, the plain number ok so that's the basic premise of, of how we've got to do it and we, we've basically got to create a function called check IO so that's the, the story we can go back to it any time uh, we then click on solve it And Hello here's everyone, our this is window. Oh, let's get Today I'm going tutorial. to show. So here you go. <coughs> what we've got now is our editor to work in. So our function here is defined, check IO with a number, uh, and it's going to return uh, our number. Um, so it says number here, but obviously we can change that. Uh, something as a string. And obviously we can edit this if we don't like that particular return. But the basic function that we're going to create then fits into this block of code here. Um, if um, as we run our program what's it going to do? It's actually going to test our bit of code with these checks. It's going to call our check our function and pass 15 in and it's expecting fizz buzz as our answer. Uh, it's going to recall our function and pass 6 in etc. So these four lines down here are checks basically to check our program performs as expected. So the, the idea now is you write your code in here to actually make it work. So just to get you going, let's have a look at um, how we would do that first one. Okay, so obviously we've got to put our code in here. <coughs> this is a function we've got to define, check IO. We're going to write the code in here uh, and possibly use, use this return statement or maybe put our own in. If you forget what the puzzle is, then just click on it up here, uh, fizzbuzz. <coughs> It'll return it. So possibly just make a note of this on a piece of paper. If the if the input number is divisible by three and five, you want to return fizz buzz. If it's just divisible by three, fizz. If it's just divisible by five, buzz. Uh, and if it's not divisible by either, you want to just pass the number back as a string. Uh, just notice there's a little space there between fizz and buzz as well. So that's what I want to do. And here's some examples. If I pass in 15, I obviously get fizz space buzz back. If I pass in six, because there's two threes and six, we get fizz. Five, we get buzz. And seven is not divisible by either, so we just get the seven as a string. 
so let's go back to solve it so we're going to put the code in here now just to see what happens let's just hit try it see what goes on what happens now is we we, we kind of able to run the code here and pass numbers in so I can pass in a, the random number 123 that's just generated I've called the function check IO with 123 and it returns 123 as a string well that's not surprising because uh, that's all the code up here does um, obviously I can put my own number in here too I uh, calculate that I pass in two and I get the string two back well that's all our code does <coughs> obviously now we need to put our code in here so the way I'm going to do this um, we obviously need to use uh, some of Python's modular arithmetic so I'm going to say if our uh, number modular division remainder with three equals zero so if when we divide by three we get no remainder and obviously it's divisible by three so I want my out str um, I'll create myself a new string variable and remember if it's divisible by three I wanted the word fizz so f i z z okay and I think it was a lowercase actually I just realized it's a capital so f i double z it will will be catch out on things like that um, if on the other hand or if as well it's divisible by five again it's our modular division with five is zero <coughs> now let's think about what's going to happen here so we come down here it may have already been divisible by three in which case outstring is already fizz or it may not be in which ca case outstring doesn't even exist at the moment um, and then we're testing whether it's divisible by five so if it's divisible by five and it was divisible by three already I need to add buzz to the end if it wasn't divisible by three and it's it's nothing at the moment I just need the word buzz by itself so I'm gonna have to do a further test in here and really what I want to see is to see whether it's been altered already so I'm actually going to set um, out str uh, equal to a null string here at the start so out str is a null string if it's divisible by three it'll now be fizz if it's divisible by five I'm just going to see first of all check if it's been altered so if now remember this is only happening if it's divisible by five so if s uh, what's it called out str out str is a null string so obviously that means I haven't found it divisible by three I set it to just be the word buzz because it's now divisible by only five otherwise so if we get to this else statement think about how we get down here to the else statement it must have been divisible by three first of all and already been set to fizz because here we've said if it's um, a null string do this otherwise it'll only de be down here now if it's already set to fizz what I've got to do is take the out str current string uh, which is fizz uh, sorry fizz already yeah equal out str and add to that don't forget the space and the word buzz okay <coughs> okay so let's just refresh where we are so basically our out str started as zero so only if it was divisible by three we set it to fizz if we then went on and it was divisible by five we first of all said is it a null string so it hadn't been divisible by three we set it to buzz if it otherwise it was already uh, set to fizz so we just added the word buzz on the end so by the end of getting to here we will have an out string which is either a null string still because it wasn't divisible by either or it'll be fizz or buzz or fizz buzz depending so really all we need to do now here is test it and uh, we can just say if out str equals our null string so if it was our null string obviously uh, it wasn't divisible by three or five so we actually need to do what it said which was return the string as a number um, otherwise we want to return out str out string. So that should be our code. 
So what we can do now is give it a quick test. Um, so let's just kind of go up through the numbers. We'll hit one and do calculate. Oh, got a syntax error here. Something on line nine. If number. Oh, yeah, missed a bracket out there. Um, I'll put a bracket down there. I don't need that one. Uh, let's try that again. We'll put one in. Right, so one returns string one, which is correct. Two returns string two, which was correct. So three should return fizz, which it did. Four should return four. Five should return buzz. And uh, six is two, three, so that should return fizz. And um, 15 is our two and that returns fizz buzz so we, we've kind of played with our code we think it's kind of correct but really the test is now to run and check it so this now will take our code off and it will run a whole series of checks so here are the first set of checks it runs but it will run other checks and tasks solved so you can um, from this point on you can publish your solution I think I think you can view other people's solutions this may not be the neatest way to do this some of you may find much more efficient ways to do it you may find completely different ways to do it it doesn't really matter the whole point of this check IO is that you're writing this function so that it generates what's required and you know you've been told to create a function that generates um, a return value to those criteria and you've met that and incidentally that's kind of one area of programming so yeah you've solved your task um, and from memory I can't remember where you go here um, there's a view of the solutions yeah, somebody else will probably yeah, this is kind of super wizzo solution if you want to have a look. You can now go back to your story having solved that. Um, so you've solved it and I can't remember where you go here. You must be able to go on somehow to the next task. Oh, no, I just saw a get next task actually. So I might have solved it. Let's go back to the fizz buzz and try. I just saw a get next task somewhere. Oh, there we go, get next task. <coughs> and you're now given a, another particular problem to solve again. You, you've got to write a whole code in check IO so that given these inputs, you get those outputs. Okay, hopefully that'll help and uh, get you going with check IO. Thanks, bye.